Hello Internet, Jazza here. For the uninitiated, Eurovision can be an odd affair. For some, it can be intimidating, offensive, and downright scary, especially if you're not, like me, unhealthily obsessed with the world's largest television production outside of China's Chinese New Year Gala, which I'm, I'm sure at some point you're waiting for me to review at some point. Right? Maybe 2017 is your first time watching and maybe you're from the United States and are confused why American Idol no longer has Ryan Seacrest hosting. No idea if that reference is relevant and whether he's still hosting. I haven't actually thought about American Idol since 2007, so oh well. But regardless, I'm here to give you 10 things to look out for when you watch the final of the Eurovision Song Contest on the 13th of May. But first, here are some honourable mentions that you will have missed by not watching the two semi-finals this week. Ireland and this inexplicable hot air balloon, a tribute to Adele from Iceland, and this man with the world's longest top not pretending to be a helicopter, which honestly, this last one from Montenegro gave me so much, so much life, I was instantly transported to a grotty Eastern European gay bar and it was giving me life, yeah. But alas, they didn't make it past the semi-final, but here's what you need to look out for when we get to the actual grand final. The exciting bit. First of all, the cute guys who are 17 years old and so you're not allowed to fancy them. Stop it. There are downsides to having a contestant whose vocal cords haven't necessarily completely matured yet, and we very vividly heard these consequences when Isaiah from Australia hit this note. Also in the tween category is Bulgaria's answer to Final Fantasy XV's Noctis crossed with Troy Sivan Christian Kostov. His staging is really bloody good. Might be one to look out for the win there. You can have that tip for free. Second thing to look out for, male beauty we can actually appreciate. Shh, shh, shh. Baby, don't sing. You'll ruin it. Number three in our list of things to keep your eye out for for the Eurovision, repetition. Specifically from Spain's surfer-inspired Jason Mraz-esque tune, Do It For Your Lover. The verses are in beautiful, chirpy Spanish, and then we get to the choruses and I want to tear my ears out. How about we count together how often he says a variation of Do It For Your Lover. The fourth thing that you should be looking out for is Salvador doing his impression of Gollum. Not listening. Sorry, not sorry, Portugal. The fifth thing that you'll probably notice is the fact that Russia aren't competing this year, which I think is a great shame, because I always relish the opportunity of holding up gay flags in front of performers from regimes that back homophobia. <sighs> Can we also actually, quite seriously, have a moment to remember the abs of Sergei Lazarev, their entrant from last year. Peace be upon them. Peace be upon them. This year, 2017, Russia were planning on being represented by Yulia Samoylova. Try saying that ten times quickly when you're drunk. With the pretty shit song, Flame is Burning. However, Yulia did a very silly thing and ended up breaking Ukrainian law by touring the region of Crimea in 2015. Remember when Russia just kind of shuffled up to Crimea, a region of Ukraine, and called dibs on it when nobody was looking in 2014. Well, it turns out that Ukraine is still kind of salty about that. But politics doesn't to play any role in Eurovision at all. <laughs> Hmm. Russia were actually offered a chance of being able to enter somebody who hadn't broken the laws of the host country, or even to broadcast in their entrant via satellite, but Russia threw a strop and went, hmm, niet, borsh, and so, no Russia this year. The sixth thing to keep your eye out for, and this is a doozy, motion sickness, specifically from France. Bring a sick bag. 
The seventh thing to bear in mind when watching this year's Eurovision is the fact that we probably have one of the best entries, and could have won, if it weren't for this little thing called Brexit Brexit I Lulu Brexit Brexit I'm Spy! Mm -hmm. Surprise! I'm from the United Kingdom, and my nation genuinely has one of its best songs and singers that we've had in years. It's been written by a previous winner, it's called I Will Never Give Up On You, and it's three minutes of Lucy Jones soaring over these amazingly powerful notes, and the staging is brilliant, and she does have moments of it a bit too much theatre, but I really think I really think it could have won. I am a bit of an over-optimist when it comes to the UK's chances, but I... Oh, the, the hope? That is, we could have won if it weren't for the fact that last year, a load of xenophobes teamed together and decided to vote to flip the bird at the 27 other members of the European Union, most of whom we're asking to vote for us during the Eurovision Song Contest. Now, I know that international relations is more than just singing competitions, but I refuse to stop talking about Brexit. The ape thing to keep your eye out for at this year's Eurovision is the horse head from Azerbaijan. Is it a coded message about bestiality? Is it perhaps a metaphor for the armenian Azeri conflict? Who knows? Who really cares? Enjoy. The ninth thing to keep your eye out for, spoken word popra. Yeah, that's a genre now. Croatia, bless them, open with this spoken word prelude to their song. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything's a miracle. Cool. He then proceeds to duet with himself. Hold out your hand, don't let it slip away. Yo so que existe, guarda me. Go compare! <laughs> Sorry, no idea how Matt got in there. And then finally, the tenth thing to look out for is rap yodeling. Yes, another new genre. It's so exciting. Romania, this is such a shit show. And it's so wonderfully Eurovision. It's rapping and yodeling. Like, he's rapping, she's yodeling, yodeling, and She's dressed like a leprechaun. It's just so beautiful and just so quintessentially, fantastically Eurovision. Like, like oh, it's beautiful. Um, every year I live tweet Eurovision and I get increasingly drunk and funny. And all of the people who follow me for politics stuff will invariably unfollow me. Um, understandable, to be frank. Um, but uh, if you would like to tweet along with me and um, get in with the dance on the evening of the 13th of May, then follow me at Jazza John. Um, thank you so much to all of my patrons. Um, uh, you guys are making it possible for me to do this shit more regularly. Um, uh, and if you think that this stuff is fun, then think about um, uh, subscribing on Patreon. Um, uh, you can, there's my face, subscribe there. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like. Click on that. Eurovision!